Hey there, Generative Media for Live Performance. Uh, so today we're going to look at two different ways to accomplish a very similar task here in Touch Designer. Um, and so I want us to actually like look at what that, uh, what I mean by that, right? So uh, here's one um, example of this, right? And, and what I'm after here is, uh, in this particular instance, I'm trying to build an application that gives me a set of thumbnails on the left-hand side of my screen and then an image that's displayed here on the right-hand side of the screen. And ideally, I want to be able to take um, these guys over here and click on uh, one of these thumbnails and then have it uh, bring up a larger thumbnail over here on the right. So that's one thing that I'm after, is, is that particular kind of Im implementation of this uh, problem. Okay, great. Another uh, implementation uh, or another solution to that same problem could be found uh, looking at this method. And again, this does roughly the same thing, right? So I've got uh, a set of uh, images over here on the left, and when I click on one of them, uh, I select it over here on the right. So far, so good. This looks like I'm doing exactly the same thing, so why would I need two different ways to solve this particular problem? Well, we're going to look at um, what those might mean and the benefits of one over the other um, today. And we'll probably break this up into two tutorials, uh, one that deals with just the container method, right? One that deals only with objects that exist in uh, two-dimensional space, and then one that deals with uh, render picking, which deals with objects that exist in 3D space. Okay, so without further ado, uh, let's start to dive in and get a closer look at how we do um, some of this, right? So I'm going to go ahead and open up a new network, and we are going to get right into it here. All right, da 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 da. So this, um, when we, as we get started here, we should notice that uh, we've got our regular old network here, our kind of standard network um, that Touch Designer opens up with. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and get rid of that palette browser because I don't want to worry about it. I'm going to back out one level here um, because I don't want to be inside of this network while I'm working. And I'm going to go ahead and delete this uh, thing called Project 1 because I want to start actually just from scratch. Now what we're going to start by doing is adding a container here to our network. And one of the things that uh, we need to think about, or one of the things that we should probably understand about the way that containers work here inside of Touch Designer, is that containers assume that we want to both have the opportunity to have a control panel, right? Some uh, elements that we need to interface with, and then also some elements that exist in the background. So this both displays something, right? And then also gives us a container, or it gives us a control surface to interact with. And we want to have both of those things. So let's go ahead and dive inside of this container, uh, right? We can uh, middle mouse zoom into this. We could also use the I key to move inside of this and use the H key to come home, right? To just center me in my network. And we need a couple primary ingredients in here. So one of the things that we're thinking about is how we're going to combine multiple containers together. Right? And I happen to know this because I've kind of run through all of this already, but if we look back or think back to to what I had before, right? I've got uh, kind of several things going on over here. On the left side, I've got this one box that's a set of containers, and then I've got another uh, set of, I have another single container over here on the right. Uh, and so we're gonna kind of think about how we're gonna organize this as uh, kind of rectilinear boxes that we're kind of arranging in a particular way. And that will make more sense as we get started here. So with that in mind, uh, one of the first places I want to start is I'm going to go ahead and add another container to my network. And I might call this one uh, Buttons. And then I'm going to add another container. I need to add one more. And we'll call this one Disp for Display. And I'm going to go ahead and box select both of these. And I want both of them to be 600 by 600 pixels in size. Excellent. And finally, I want a third container, and we'll see um, why we want this container a little bit later on. We'll come back to him. Okay, in the meantime, what we need to start by doing is we need to start working in our buttons, right? So if we think back to what's going on in our example, 
Let me look at it one more time. I've got a set of buttons that exist over here, right? That's what I want to start by working with. So we're going to go ahead and zoom inside of buttons and we're going to get to work uh, making some elements here inside of this network uh, to get us going. So we're going to use a method uh, for this particular approach that relies on replication. And replication is something that uh, allows us to do similar actions um, or similar repetitive actions very quickly and easily. It allows us to automate some of the, the process of building elements inside of our, um, our networks. It's one of the approaches that uh, I use as much as possible because it, it pushes you away from thinking about hard coding all of your particular um, pieces of, of your networks and thinking about how you approach something systematically as a way of doing it quickly and efficiently. But replicators require a few primary ingredients. In fact, if we go ahead and uh, grab our replicator component, it's located here on the comps tab, we'll see that uh, we have a couple things that we need. We need a template DAP, and then we need a master operator. Uh, so let's go ahead and head over to DATS, and we need to add a table first. And let's go ahead and attach this to a null. We'll see why that's important a little bit later on. Oops. The null is actually what I wanted to grab here. We'll wire those together. And from this table, um, from this table that we're actually going to go ahead and load another file. And you can use either the MR Flickr or you can use uh, the picture index. Either one of those will work just fine. Those are located in the Blackboard. And the next thing we need to do is we need to reload this file. So we're going to hit Pulse here. And we're going to see that we've got a data table that's added for us here that has one column that's a name and another column that's a link. And that's uh, dumped into our null here, uh, which is where all of our uh, kind of like final elements fit. Okay, so let's next, we're gonna add another container here to our network. Okay, and we're gonna call this one master one, because I want it to both have a name and I want it to have a digit. We'll see why we need a digit here in, in just a moment. So part of what I'm thinking about uh, in this particular uh, way of working is I need to kind of conceptualize the way that I built this by thinking about the fact that my replicator requires uh, a kind of template, right? It needs a master operator, something that it's going to make copies of. And then it needs a, a table, it needs a kind of list of things that it's going to make copies based off of. Because what we're going to do is we're going to make copies of this particular master operator for every row that exists inside of this table. So I need both of these kind of primary ingredients to get us started here. The next thing I'm going to do before I get too far along here is I'm going to go ahead and set the width of this to be 200 by 200. I know that I want it to be that particular size. Uh, and then uh, last but not least, what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in here to where it says clone and I'm going to drag my operator right into that parameter. So I can see that I've made this a clone of itself. And again, that's going to make more sense here in just a, a couple of moments. So we're gonna start by building our kind of uh, prototypical um, operator or series of operators here inside of this component. And so there are a couple things that I need to think about as I'm building that. Um, so let's go ahead and get started. Let's zoom inside of this guy and let's get to work here. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab a movie file in top. So the place I'm starting is I want to start with an actual image file. I need an image to actually um, make into this button here. And we can see here in the file parameter that I'm actually already pointed to this TIFF file that exists on my hard drive. And what I want to do in this case is I want to point this uh, someplace else instead. I'd actually like to point it out to the web. And what I want to do is I want to point it to someplace based on that list of different uh, files. I'm going to go ahead and split my view here, left and right, so I can look at two places in my network simultaneously. I'm going to go ahead and bring up the parameters here on this right side. I'm going to zoom out on the left side. And I can see that this thing is called null1. So we just need to write an expression that allows us to pull out some piece of what's going on over here in this particular table. The way that we reference um, operators here instead of touch designers, we need to think about how we do that in terms of Python. And the Python method for this uh, is to use operator, op as the call, right? So I'm looking for an operator and I need to specify its name because the name of this thing is stored as a string. 
and the name of the operator is null one. Now there's a problem with the way that I've started this, uh, which is that I need to, in writing this particular expression, include some directions to where this lives inside of my network. So if I just point to null one, it's looking in this uh, level, right, of my, of my network to try and find this. Uh, and there is nothing inside of uh, this master container called null one. Instead, what I need to do is I need to tell it that it needs to look up one level, and that's dot dot slash, look up one directory level for the thing called null one. And next, I need to specify which row and which column I want it to look in. Now, I'm going to ask it to look for the row that's me dot parent dot digits. So I'm looking for my parents' digits, um, and that's the reason that we left this one here, right? So this lives inside of another container, which is its parent. In this case, I'm looking at uh, master one, right? Look at my parent, master one. Find its digits, one. The next thing I want you to do is I want you to find the, find the column that has the name over here called link. And I'm going to put that in quotations because it's a string. So what I've done now here is I've gone ahead and specified that I want you to look for the operator called null one. I want you to use my parents' digits, and I want you to find the column called link. And we should be able to highlight this portion of our expression here. And we can see that it evaluates that for us. It's a really handy thing um, that happens here in Touch Presenter for us. It can give us some hints about how we can understand what's going on here inside of some of our expressions. So we can see that me.parent.digits is evaluated as an integer with a value of 1. Excellent. And in this case, I'm looking up here, right? I look at null 1. And I'm looking for the column called link, and I look at the row one, and lo and behold, there is my kind of bubbly coffee. Excellent. Okay. So we're off to a good start here, uh, but I'd like to include one other thing along with this. I would also like to include some text. I would like some text to sit on top of this particular image. So, in order to, to kind of grab the right text, right, I want the name, I'm going to use a similar way of uh, grabbing that information. Now, a text, um, a text top gives me a few different ways of doing that. So, in this case, I can uh, achieve that same effect uh, by, let's go ahead and delete this thing here called text. I'm going to grab this whole operator and I'm going to drag it over here to my DAT. I'm going to ask for a relative path. And I can see here that it's looking for uh, the DAT called null one. Again, dot, dot, slash. Look one network above me for the operator called null one. And right now it's looking at row zero. So in this case, I'm going to go ahead and just change this. I'm going to specify that I want it to use me.parent dot digits. So my parent's digits, which evaluates as one. And that grabs bubbles from the list. Perfect. Now, I'd like these two things to stay uh, connected to one another. If I middle mouse click on this, I can see that the size of this uh, particular texture is 256 by 256 pixels. If I middle mouse click on uh, this guy down here, I see that he's 640 by 640. So if we were to, for example, add a composite and put these things on top of one another, uh, we might end up with some results that we don't quite understand. All right, so this looks like it's a little bit uh, chunky and weird. and I'm not totally sure what's going on here. So let's pick apart a few of the things that are happening. First of all, one of the things that I need to do here inside of my composite is instead of this multiply, I just want to go ahead and I want to place this over. Okay, great. That looks better. But bubble still looks just a little bit fuzzy. It looks like it's the wrong resolution. And in fact, it is. If we go to the transform page, we can see the fixed layer, right? The layer that's not moving is layer two, right? So we're basing our resolution of this guy at 640 by 640 based on input two. If I were to switch this to input one, right? Now the resolution of this is 256 by 256. We're relying on the resolution of this operator and the input one slot. I'm going to go ahead and leave it at input 2 for right now, which is fine with me. And instead of fill, what I want to do is I want to do just native resolution. So at native resolution, I can see the actual size of these two things relative to one another. Let's go ahead and go back to our text top for a second. And let's change the color. 
right? I'd like to change the background color to be kind of a, a gray kind of color. And I'm going to do that by controlling the alpha, right? If I turn the alpha all the way up, I get black. If I uh, leave it, maybe like uh, 0 0.6, 0 0.25 maybe. Oh, that's the font alpha. Oops. Um, right, so let's do like maybe 0 0.5. Okay, that's getting closer. And I can see that I'm, you know, I'm kind of dialing in towards part of what I want, but I'm still all the wrong size. So how can we fix some of that? Well, the first thing I can think about doing is I can go to the common page here on my text, and I can set the resolution to match my movie file in, right? I could hard code this by saying 640 by 640. This is still not quite totally what I want, but let's start there. But if for whatever reason, if my primary asset changes, um, this is still hard coded. What I would really love to have happen is I would love for this particular operator to watch and keep close tabs on what's happening over here on my movie file in. So to do that, let's use an expression for that. And um, in this case, I'm going to go ahead and set the width to be 640 uh, by asking it to watch movie file in. And so I'm going to ask for the operator that's called movie, movie file in one, right? Movie file in one. And I'm going to ask for uh, the width of that particular uh, image, that particular operator. So this dot width uh, call is allowing me to grab the width from this particular thing. Excellent, all right, so next I wanna limit my height here a little bit. And I really only want mm, not even 200, maybe like 150 pixels worth of height on this. And let's go ahead and look at our font. We could do an auto fit, um, I don't totally like autofit because it's going to change the size of my font uh, depending on, or it's change the file of the font depending on uh, the text that's coming into this, which is not totally what I want. I'd like it to be a little more uniform. Um, so I'm going to say no autofit, and I'm going to move it up to maybe like 60 because that gives me a little bit of room on either side. And we'll look here in a second and to make sure that uh, we kind of don't max out in terms of the size of our characters for this particular approach. Okay, last but not least, what I want to do is I want to adjust the placement of this. I don't want this to sit right here in the middle. I'd like it to be, you know, more like a lower third. Um, and to do that here in the composite, I'm here on the transform page, and I'm going to go ahead and move to the translate. And instead of, well, I can use fraction. Here for fraction, I'm going to go ahead and uh, with hundreds, I'm going to kind of scroll this down and dial it in to the place that I want. So this is like a 0.28, I guess. I like it right about there. So now we've started um, right by uh, grabbing an image and then uh, also grabbing the text that corresponds to that image. We're compositing the two of those together. And then we end up uh, with this lovely composited image. Right? Okay. The next thing that we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and attach this to a null. And I'm going to go ahead and call this BG for background. I'm going to move this over here to the right a little bit. So we're going to make some other changes, but we'll see. We'll make those changes here in a second. And while I'm at it, I'm going to go ahead and add one more null. Oops. I'm going to uh, right click. No, kidding, I meant middle mouse click. Middle mouse click allows us to fork. So now we have something that isn't related over here. Excellent. And I'm going to go ahead and call this one disk, short for display. I like to keep my networks tidy. That's just my particular way of working. So I'm going to go ahead and rearrange these just a little bit because I like nice straight lines. That's the OCD part of me. OK, so we have kind of the beginning ingredients here of our, our network, right? So I've got this thing called disp, I've got this thing called bg, and I've uh, got kind of the beginnings of all those things put together. So let's go ahead and close this, and then take a closer look at what that means. So, so far, I don't see any changes here to my master operator. And I can make those changes, right, by heading over here to panel. And I'm gonna actually uh, go down here where it says background top. And I'm gonna ask the, um, I'm gonna set the background of this particular operator to be, um, or the background of this component to be the operator inside called BG. 
So I can use dot slash, look inside of me for the thing called BG, and now we've gone ahead and set that as the background here, right? I need to do one other thing. I'm going to go ahead and turn display off. And let's go ahead and um, make some magic happen here. So I'm going to go ahead and drag this guy uh, onto my replicator and tell it that it's the master operator. I'm going to grab the null over here and drag it on here and make that uh, the template table dat, template tap date, template dat table. And we should see here that, lo and behold, we have gone ahead and magically created nine versions um, of that particular network that are all set up um, based on the rules that we established here in this first component. This first container, rather, excuse me. Now, if we back out one layer, we can see that those still aren't displaying. Well, what gives? Well, if you'll remember, just a second ago, I asked you to turn the display off for this master operator. And the reason we turned it off for the master is that we're not ever actually going to interact with the master in our container itself. We only want to interact with these clones that we've made, right? All of these things that have come out of the, the replicator. Uh, so to fix that, right, to make those display, we're going to come down here to this replicator callback, and we're going to make a, a change in this side of this. Let's go ahead and make it viewer active. And I'm going to go ahead and use this C par uh, dot display equals one. I'm going to go ahead and uncomment that, right? I'm going to take out the little hash hashtag there. And that's going to allow us, uh, well, what's going to happen is that for C in the new in new ops, right? So it's, we have a for loop here. So for every single one of those replicants, now when we create one, it's going to go ahead and set the parameter called display. And this thing is the parameter called display. We'll see here, display matches display. It's going to set it equal to one, which is true. So this option, there, this action is going to go ahead and set all of these to display on um, when we add things to our, our table. We can go ahead and recreate those, or we can re-replicate them by going to our replicator and hitting create all operators, recreate all operators. And we can see now that their displays have all been set to one. All right, let's back out here. Okay, this still doesn't look quite right, what gives. I only have one here in the bottom corner. And that's because um, we need to actually change a few things about our container here. So if we back up one layer here in container one, which is this thing right here, right? Uh, and let's, we'll leave that for right now, it's all right. Uh, in container one, uh, what we want to do is we want to set buttons. We're going to go ahead and set its align to be left to right. So we're going to align left to right for this guy. Oops, and I set that on the wrong container. Let's make sure that we have our button selected and set its line to be left to right. Okay, so now we're going left to right and we're running off the edge here. Oh dear. So let's go ahead and say that the max per line that we want to have is three. And now, here we go, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, bada bing, bada boom. We've created a nice little handy um, kind of control panel here for us. Now this is getting close to what I want, but it's not totally what I want yet. Um, so let's take a, a closer look at a few things that are going on. Well, one of the things that I like to think about is uh, to consider what the order of these things is going to be, right? So our ordering system here, as we go left to right, top to bottom, is going to be based off of, uh, well, right now, it's kind of arbitrarily based off of uh, the names of these particular operators. It's alphabetical. So a good rule of thumb that I think uh, that I like is to use uh, my operator's digits to help me really make sure that I know which order things are displaying in. Um, so let's take a look at what I mean by that, uh, right? Uh, if we, yeah, we can do that uh, by heading over to our master operator here. Let's go to our layout page. And my align order, I'm going to go ahead and set that to be me.digits. So I'm just going to ask for my digits, in this case, one. And that's going to set my align order. So that's the order that I show up in, in this uh, stack, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Now we'll see that that still hasn't taken, that hasn't uh, kind of trickled down to all of our uh, children yet. So let's go ahead and recreate our network one more time. And now we should see that 
Uh, me dot digit shows up here. Okay, lovely. So this is just kind of an, uh, an insurance policy for making sure that uh, our that um, that our containers show up in an order that we expect them to show up in. Okay, let's take a few looks at a, or take a closer look at a few other things that I want to have happen. Right. So now that I've got all of these containers in here. Uh, there are, well, there are, there are several things that I really want to dig into, right? First, I'd like to have some uh, sense of how I'm interacting with these things. Um, and then I'd also like, I'd like to be able to click on one of these and for it to run a particular action. I want it to run a script um, that causes something else in my network to happen. Ideally, I'd like to click on uh, like crazy eyes over here and have this picture then display over here at a larger resolution, a full resolution, right? Because this is only 200 by 200 pixels. So how, how do I start to go about thinking about doing that? Uh, well, let's go ahead and kind of uh, put together some of the, the first things that we need to, to do that. If we look here inside of display, uh, let's add a select top. Select tops are one of my favorite uh, things in the whole world. They're like maybe one of the best features here inside of Touch Designer when it really comes down to it. And not just select tops, but selecting in general. Because selecting allows us to pull from anywhere in any network. Uh, and it's one of the most powerful features that we'll have. So I'm going to go ahead and leave this up here on the right-hand side, and I'm going to navigate us back over to inside of our buttons here on the left-hand side. So let's go ahead and dive inside of item one. And I'm going to go ahead and grab this thing called display, and if I drag and drop him right onto my select and look at a relative um, pathway for that, I can see that I'm looking at the network that's one layer up in something called buttons or the, the thing called item one or in the thing called item one for something called disp, right? This guy's name is disp. If we work backwards, we could see that disp is inside item one, which is inside of buttons and container one we share as a common directory, right? That's, uh, for both of us, that's one layer up. It's gonna be important for us to think about how we format this, because what I wanna be able to do is I wanna be able to click on any one of these and then have it dump that image over here on the right-hand side. Now, if we look closely at this, we'll notice that in that whole process, right, let's go ahead and add another one and so we can compare these. I'm gonna go ahead and grab this ocean view here. Now, if I compare the two of these, I'll see that the only thing that's different between these two select operators is actually just this number. And in fact, if I was to come in here and change this to number nine, I would, lo and behold, get this ocean view. If I was to change it to one, I would get my coffee. So think, kind of knowing that, right, having that in my back pocket uh, begins to give me a sense of how I might think about manipulating some things here inside of this thing. Now, I'm gonna do one other thing. Well, I'm still here. I'm going to go ahead and add a null, and I'm going to call this null uh, bg for background. Now let's go up one layer here, and for this container, I'm going to go ahead and set its background dot slash look inside of me for the thing called bg. Right, so that way I've kind of already got this set up and raring to go here. Okay, but that still doesn't answer my question about how I can really think about changing this when I click on something over here. So. Uh, before we go any further, one uh, thing that I should point out is that I made this operator over here, right? We'll remember back to just a few moments ago. I made the clone parameter of this operator to be master1. And the reason that I did that is because I wanted the clone parameter for all of my subsequent replicants to be set to master1. Now, that's really handy because it means whatever changes I make over here, then matriculate over and will be present inside of these subsequent networks. So let's uh, split our view top bottom here for just a hot second, and we'll see what that looks like. So I'm gonna go ahead and look here inside of my master, right? This is inside of my master operator, and let's go ahead and look down inside of one of these clones, right? Now, inside of my master operator, if I was, say, add a, a text stat, I'll see that it's added to my clone. In fact, its positioning has changed inside of my clone. If I was to zoom in on this and change this particular text stat, edit it, 
the edits are then uh, pushed to the clone. This means uh, this is incredibly powerful for us because it means that again we need to we get to really think about how we're making rules inside of our master operator, and then how that's going to matriculate down to our clones, uh, or down to our replicants rather. Okay, so let's go ahead and we'll get rid of this, and we're going to uh, take advantage of a uh, panel execute. Uh, so we talked earlier about the fact that containers assume that we have panels. And in fact, if we were to add a panel chop, the panel chop is going to allow us to actually see all of the panel attributes that are associated with this particular uh, element, right? This particular container. So let's go ahead and use this little uh, square button, this open viewer button. This is actually going to open up the viewer for the container that we're in. And we'll see that when I mouse over this, I have a U and V coordinate that's normalized 0 to 100 that shows up instead of this. I've got a rollover value that tells me that I'm actually over the top of this thing. And in fact, it tells me that I'm inside of it as well. That's handy. All right, I've got lots of information that's going on here. And when I click, when I uh, left click on this, I can see that I've got this select parameter that shows up as well as this left select. If I middle clicked, I'd see that my middle select comes up. Right selecting or right clicking brings up the right select. So I can see all of the different options for this. Okay, so uh, for this particular action, I'm going to go ahead and delete this panel. I don't need that right now. We're actually going to add it later, but for now, let's delete it. And we're going to do a little bit of scripting uh, to make some of our DAP magic happen here. So what I'm after is I would like to, uh, whenever I click on one of those elements, right? Let's take a look here. Whenever I click on one of these, I'd like to run a script that then changes the parameter over here, right? That just changes this number to be the number that corresponds to the container that I clicked on. That's, that is the thing that I'm after making. So let's look at how we can generalize that in a way, All right? Uh, first things first, I'm going to go ahead and make sure that uh, what I'm looking for is off to on. That's the change that I want to uh, look at. And the panel value that I'm looking at um, using to trigger this action is actually select. And actually, let's actually make it left, or L select, left select. Right, I happen to know what that's called. If you want just a list of all of them, you can use the drop down menu to bring those up as well. We could also, I think we should be able to actually select multiple things, right? So if I want it to happen either in left select or select, uh, I could have either one of those particular operations run this script. All right, I would like left select. I'd like this to happen when we go off to on, which means when I come over here into my DAT, um, I can focus on, let's shrink this a little bit over here. There we go. Uh, I can actually get rid of all these other uh, defined functions, right? I don't need this function while on, on to off, while off, value change. I don't need these right now. I'm only going to worry about this off to on. You, you're welcome to leave them there if you like, but you certainly don't have to have, it, have them there. While we're working on writing this script, I'm going to go ahead and do one other thing. I'm going to come over here um, and I'm going to split this display top bottom. Right? I'm going to leave, my, uh, leave myself the ability to kind of see what's happening here in my select. But I would also like to have my network, oops, my text. Uh, text port and DATs up here. Uh, because I'd like to have a console that's available to me to, to kind of debug and see what's happening here a little bit. Okay. First things first, let's go ahead and make sure that we uh, understand what's happening here for one second. I use the print command uh, to debug things constantly. It's an excellent way to kind of get your hands uh, dirty when it comes to understanding what's going on. Uh, so let's go ahead and start by just printing something very simple, uh, like me.parent.digits. So I just want to print my parent's digits. And if I open up my viewer here, when I click on this, I get one. And in fact, if I was to zoom out one, or actually we can all just go out one layer here. If I was to come up one level and open the viewer, right, that brings up this guy, I could see uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, right? So I know how to get to my digits, 
And that script works like a charm so far. So let's go ahead and take advantage of that. Uh, let's, let's call that something. Let's define that variable as number. So I'm going to say that number is equal to uh, me dot parent dot me dot parent dot digits. Okay, excellent. The next thing that I need, right, is I need to uh, think about how I'm going to recreate this string over here, right? That's really what I'm after. Is I want to write this whole thing and then put it all back together again. So I'm going to start by thinking about this portion right here. And I'm going to call that path, oops, path start. So path start is going to be equal to, and I'm going to use quotation marks here, I can use double or single quotes, it doesn't matter, uh, is going to be dot dot slash up one level to find buttons, buttons, slash, item, and then the digit goes in there, right? So I'm going to go ahead and while I'm here, just go ahead and close my quotation mark. I don't need anything more from my path start. Then I need my path end, and my path end is everything that follows after this digit. So path end is going to be inside of my quotation marks slash disp. Okay. So that means um, that I've kind of had this all put together, right? If I was to print this, so let's go ahead and print uh, let's see your path start plus num plus path end. If we were to print that out in our console, we get an error. Oh no, what happened, right? I get this little, real big red X that tells me that something is broken, something didn't work right. If I look over here, it even gives me uh, the problem, the error that it ran into. And here it's telling me that it can't convert an integer to a string implicitly. Like, well, what does that mean? Well, that means that this guy right here, right, my parents digits exist as an integer. It's a, a number, it's a, a value, right? And what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to ask it to make a string out of that. And Python doesn't want to do that automatically. It, it wants to know exactly what I want it to be. So I can change that here in number by telling it that I would like to make a string, right, str, make a string out of me.parent.digits. Now, when I run this, I can see that lo and behold, I get this path, dot dot slash buttons item one slash disk. If I was to go up one layer here, right, and uh, look at this container, I can see that sure enough, I'm generating a string that's based off of the digits of any one of these, as well as, um, all of the additional string information that I need to drive my select over here. So we're getting really close. Okay. Let's come back inside here and let's look at uh, one other thing or a couple other things that we need to know. Right. So, so this is working so far. And in fact, I'm just going to go ahead and comment this out because I'm going to leave it there just in case I want it. The next thing I need to define is I need to kind of know what my, uh, operator is that I want to change, right? And in this case, I'm going to call it my target. My target is this thing over here, this select one. So I'm looking for an operator. Oops. My target is an operator that is at a location that is one, two networks above me, right? We go up one network and we're here. We go up two networks and we're here at buttons. And from two networks up, I'm going to look for the thing called disp, right? That's my thing that's short for display. And then I'm going to look for the thing called select one. So look up one network, look up two networks, find disp, find select one. This guy right here. Okay, last but not least, what I'm going to do is I want uh, target. So I'm going to grab target. I want its parameter dot par, the parameter that in this case is called top. So parameter top, and I want that to be equal to path start 
plus my number plus my path end. And with any luck, what we should see is we should see if I click on this that it changes this guy over here. All right. So let's see if that's generalized enough to work for uh, all of our um, buttons here, right? So let's go ahead and make this viewer active. And it should be that anytime I click on one of these, that script runs and it changes what's going on over here. All right. Pretty sassy. Pretty stinking sassy. Now that's not quite good enough, right? I want to think about some more uh, fancy things that I want to have happen. Because that's close, um, but I would really also love to be able to click on one of these, or not even to click on one of these, I would like these to be like a little bit dimmer, and then I would like them to highlight whenever I mouse over them. So let's go back. We can kind of close up shop over here. We're done uh, writing scripts for right now. And let's dive inside of master one here, and let's think about how we might do that. Right, I'm gonna go ahead and move my panel uh, execute up here. And I'm gonna grab a panel chop. Now my panel chop, like we saw earlier, has got all sorts of interesting information in it. If I open up my panel, one of the things that I see is that I've got this value called rollover. And so I want to go ahead and I want to pull out of this just uh, roll over. Now I typed it in there because I know what it's called. You could uh, just as easily, right, use this drop down menu and find rollover here from the list. Either one of those methods works for this. Now I'm going to go ahead and take rollover. I'm going to connect it to a null. And I'm going to bring this over here a bit. And I know that what I'd like to do is I'd like to derive um, the kind of uh, display quality, right? The uh, opacity of these guy, of this particular button based on my rollover. So I'm going to insert an operator here called level, and I'm going to use a level top to complete that action for me. I'm going to scoot this down here a little bit more. Perfect. Now there are a bunch of different ways that we can kind of create these relationships. Um, and we'll look at, um, well, we'll look at both, uh, two ways that I find uh, easy to kind of do this, right? Um, so what I want to do is I want to drive the level here. I want to go to post and I'd like to drive my opacity right with this rollover value. Now I could uh, make this guy viewer active with this little plus button here in the bottom right hand corner. I could grab this particular channel and drag it down here and drop it on this thing called opacity and that's going to go ahead and set up that relationship for me. In fact, if I look here, I can see that it's actually written out the expression for me. Um, I could also, right, if I didn't want to do that dragging and dropping, I could actually just write the expression here. And in this case, I, uh, I think when you're starting, it's good to write the expressions because it helps to really cement in your mind what it is that you're after, right? It really helps you understand the relationships that you're creating. So in this case, I'm going to look for the operator called null1, right? I want to look at this operator and I need to include the name of this inside of quotation marks. And then I'm going to use brackets, right? So parentheses, find null1, and then in brackets, I'd like you to find inside of null1 the thing called rollover. So this is exactly the same expression. We just wrote it by hand in this case, rather than uh, kind of relying on touch designer to write that for us automatically. Now, we'll see more about why that's important later on and why I like doing it that way. Um, you're welcome to kind of, you know, take whatever approach that you feel like is right for you. Okay, so this is close, right? But I, I can see that what happens here is that I'm all the way on and all the way off. This is like not totally what I want uh, because I still want to be able to see this a little bit. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and insert another operator here. We're going to insert some math. And in our case, we're going to go to the range page here, and from the range of 0 to 1, right, on to 0 to 1, I want to change that to be 0 0.5. So I'd like it to be 50% to 1. Now I can see here that I've still got this hard kind of like 
bang on, bang off, uh, which might be the kind of uh, visual style that you're going for, right? If I make this viewer active, I can see that it's like tick, 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 right? It's got a really hard on off kind of quality to it. In this case, I want to go ahead and change that. I'm going to insert another operator and I want to filter that. I want that to have a kind of smoother shape to it. Right, so now I have this kind of gentle roll in, roll out. And that's like, oof, a little too slow. That's like, yeah, molasses. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and change the filter width to be 0 0.15. And in fact, we could probably make it 0 0.1. Right, that's a little bit uh, snappier. But it doesn't quite have that hard on, hard on. Maybe 1.2. Yeah, something that, you know, not totally snap snap. Um, but it's got like a little bit of a soft edge to the front back of it. If we were to add a trail, we could compare those two, right? So let's look at this guy, right? This is our binary on off. If we plug our uh, filter into the bottom of this, we can see what that's looking like, right? So it's got a little bit softer uh, ease in, ease out quality to it. The wider we make our, our filter width, the more we can start to see uh, what's going on in, the, in our ramp there. And we have a bunch of different kinds of um, types of filtering that we could do. And we're going to leave it at Gaussian for right now. Uh, and I'm actually going to go ahead and change this filter width back to uh, 0 0.12, I think is what I like today. And let's go ahead and get rid of that trail because we don't actually need it. It's not helping us. Okay, so now what we've ended up with, right, is now we've got this thing here uh, that gives us some kind of gentle ease in, ease outs inside of our, our container, right? So we've got this nice kind of like gentle highlight. When I click on one of these, it runs a script that changes this thing over here. The last thing I want to do is I want to combine the two of these together, right? I want them to live side by side. So here in this uh, container, uh, and we could probably call this something like uh, final, sure, why not? I want its height to be 600 pixels, right? I want it to be the same height as both of these. And then I need it to be the width of both of these added together. So it's going to be 1200 pixels wide. I'm going to go ahead and box select both of these and then drag down here to connect them with hierarchy. And we can see that we have the same thing that happened here, right? It, uh, there's no line that's set, so it just stacked them one right on top of another. So if I align them left to right, lo and behold, there we have our containers one and two. Now, let's look at something here, right? Because uh, it's aligning these left to right alphabetically based on buttons and display. Well, let's say that I wanted uh, you know, Sasquatch over here to be on the left and my buttons to be on the right. Well, you know, how could I make that happen um, kind of easily? So here we could look at a line order, right? So in this case, I'd like my buttons, or I'd like display, I'm going to have it uh, stay at align order zero, so it's the first in line. I'm going to change buttons to be align order one, right? So now I've changed which one is which. So even though in this orientation, right, in this view, I can see that this is on the left and this is on the right, up here, because I changed their alignment order, um, that's changed their positions up in this container. In general, I like to lay out my networks in a way that matches uh, what it is that I'm trying to create inside of my control panels. That is absolutely up to you. That's my particular choice. Um, I just happen to like that as a kind of uh, organizational system for understanding what it is that I'm doing. Uh, otherwise, I get really confused. So I'm going to go ahead and change this back to zero. I'm going to change this one to one. So there's no uh, chance that they're going to fall out of their proper alignment order. All right. So there we go. Now we've got our container here. Uh, that is our buttons and all set up here. So the last thing to look at is here this parent container, right? If we go up one more level, this thing still doesn't look right. This is like all kerflunkity. So let's use some expressions to actually make uh, this parent uh, work the way that we want it to. So we're going to go ahead and look at width and height here. And I'm going to ask for the operator, yikes, that is inside of me, 
called final, and I'd like the parameter from that called w. I'm going to go ahead and copy that and use it again for height. In this case, I'm going to look for height. So these parameters, right, parameter width height, if I look, let's go ahead and split our view here. If we look inside and we look at final here, and let's bring up our parameters window. So the parameters I'm asking for, W and H, I can find, I can change or set or reference any parameter uh, by using this par call, right? So find the thing parameter, and then I just need to know the exact name of the parameter. In this case, width, right, over here on the far left-hand side, this is the actual uh, name of the parameter when I'm writing an expression in Python. That's where that lives. So that's how I know that this is the way that I'm actually going to write that particular expression to track that down. This means that for whatever reason, if I change the dimensions of something inside of here, my parent's going to go ahead and change right along with it. And I don't have to worry about kind of futzing or figuring out what's going on there. So let's go ahead and close that. Last but not least, right, um, the last thing that we might want to think about is setting this to be what runs in perform mode. So in perform mode, what we have is we actually uh, stop doing a bunch of other things here instead of touch designer, right? We don't render any of the programming environment. We only render the application or the thing that we're actually asking for. But we have to know how to set that up. So in order to set that up, I'm going to take container. I'm going to drag it on this thing called perform. And I'm going to specify that this is the operator to use for perform. So now when I use this little box up here in the corner, perform mode, uh, when I do that, I turn off everything else, and now I'm only actually looking at this application that I've built. Now, it's very important that you do not hit this red X. Do not, do not touch that, right? If I hit that red X, I actually close my whole file, um, and I will be really sad about that. So instead, to exit perform mode, I'm gonna use the escape key to come out of this. The last thing I might think about as I might think about going to, 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 to the preferences, nope, excuse me, the dialogs drop down, and then going to the window placement um, dialog, and then telling this to start and perform mode. So if I tell it to start and perform mode, we actually never load any of the uh, network environment, right? We never load any of the uh, elements that are going to allow us to kind of start up and do any kind of editing. We start out right away in perform mode. So I'm going to go ahead and apply this and uh, bring it back over here. Boink. Now let's go ahead and save this. I'm going to do file, save as. I haven't saved yet, and that, you know, that's probably not a good idea. It's mostly because I know exactly what I'm uh, building, and I've built that before, so I'm not worried about losing it. So I'm going to go ahead, uh, let's add a new folder, and we'll call this image select. And I'm going to call this, oops, image select dot one dot toe. We'll save that. Okay. So that's been successfully saved. Excellent. Let's close that. And then let's open up a browser here. We'll go to our desktop. We'll find that file. And we should see that when we open this up, uh, it's going to start up right away in perform mode. And in fact, it's probably going to start up over on my other monitor right now because I didn't tell it to start up on this particular one, and that's okay. I'll drag it over here once we get fired up. Oh, there it is. Perfect. Lo and behold, there it is. Right? We didn't run anything else. It's just this guy that's up and running. So let's use the escape key, and we uh, using the escape key is going to bring us back here into the uh, networking and programming environment. And now we're ready to to do almost the same exact thing, uh, but to take a slightly different tack at how we start to build it. So I'm going to actually do that in a second video. So hold your horses, kids. Uh, we are in for a wild ride.